Hi everyone, this is Louise and welcome to this week's Colouring Club. We are colouring from this colouring book, Colouring Botanical Blooms, Bouquets and Mandalas. And today we are going to be colouring a botanical mandala. So this is in section two of my book and this is the anemone flower. And what is so beautiful about these flowers is that they have this gorgeous velvety look and feel and also the most amazing markings on them. So we are going to have a go at kind of depicting some of those markings and I may even be colouring in the grayscale design as well. So let's get to it. Thanks a lot everyone for being here and let's get colouring. Okay, so hi everyone. Today we are going to be colouring in this lovely anemone botanical mandala here. And obviously we've got the grayscale design on this side as well. But in this video, we're going to be focusing purely on the main design, which is the botanical mandala from my book, Colouring Botanical Blooms, Bouquets and Mandalas. Now, the anemone, um, this was inspired by one of the tutorials in my Drawing Botanical Blooms book and you will find that if you've already got this book you'll know that's on a page 108 and we draw this lovely anemone and there's lots of um, other exercises as well. So most of the illustrations in the colouring book are actually taken from my Drawing Botanical Blooms which is why it's called Botanical Blooms and here is actually the original drawing or one of the original drawings, let's say, because this is slightly different, obviously. But when I was actually drawing out ideas for my colouring book, um, this is one of my original drawings from the Inktober that I took part in. So, um, yeah, so we are going to dive into this. I've also got some colour inspiration here. Here's some illustrations of this anemone flower that I actually created for my Drawing Botanical Blooms book. And I thought, I mean, I think these two are my favourite here. These two are my favourite. So I think we might do a combination of both of these. So whatever I do in this video here on the main design, um, obviously all the pencils, everything I'm using, all the information is in the description for the video. And you'll also be able to see the finished colouring version of this grayscale as well. If you click the link that's in the description that goes to my blog um, and you'll be able to see how beautiful it looks when you colour the whole thing in, which you can do. So, um, yeah, this book, it has 65 original drawings, but obviously you've got all the grayscale as well. So you've got 130 different designs that you can actually colour. So that's fabulous. Um, okay, so what I've done, I've already selected my colours and they're from my favourite colouring pencils, which are from Staedtler. And I put the link to these in the description as well. And thank you to one of the lovely um, students or buyers of my book who, who asked me to put the numbers of the colours into the description. So if you do have these particular pencils, you can have a look in the description and I'll actually write down the numbers of the colours that I use. But I've done like a little testing swatch thing here. And so for this design, it's going to be this red that I've got over here. And then we might incorporate some of this lovely purple as well, maybe into this main design. Or I might save that for the grayscale. I haven't really got a plan. <laughs> I'm just going to go with the flow and see where my intuition takes me. Um, now, again, I will pop in when I've got something to tell you about what I'm doing with the colouring. I'm just simply going to enjoy colouring this design in. And um, I hope you enjoy colouring your design in as well. And I'd love to see them. Please make sure you share them using the hashtag and I can comment on them. OK, so let's get started. I think I'm going to actually start from the centre here. So I will zoom in and zoom out um, when I edit the video and um, you can kind of see some of the detail. So I'm going to start with this kind of reddish colour that I've got. I've picked out a kind of like a red, a muted red and a bit of a pinky red going on here. So I thought it might be nice to 
change the designs a little bit but I think I'm going to put the pinky colour more on these buds because the um, buds are normally more vibrant because they're younger and then I'll do this lovely design on the anemone here. So we're going to dive in. I'll pop that here as my little inspiration. I'm just going to lightly shade around. Now obviously this design here I've used watercolours. You can see the blending and everything. So we're just going to lightly add this to the petals of this anemone here. And what you can do, you can very lightly add the blending to spread the colour a bit further if you wanted to. So even though we're not using watercolours, you can kind of blend, go very, very lightly. You can see just using that one colour, we've created the markings here. And then I've just added that very lightly on here just to add some more colour. So we're just going to go round and do exactly the same. I haven't used red in a lot of my work, actually. It tends to be a colour I use more in the winter, kind of at Christmas. So it's actually quite nice to use this today. So I'll just speed up the film just very, very slightly as I'm going around the petals. I'm just using the same technique as I'm going around. I'm adding the markings in here first. So not too heavy on the pigment, you know, it's kind of medium and then very, very lightly around the edge here. Just to kind of move that colour, blend that in and also kind of mimic the watercolour kind of look and feel that I've got going on on the inspiration piece. lovely example how you know here you're kind of adding in your own markings your own version of the flower because obviously I haven't got lines here to kind of guide you with how to color this in so um, you know you can use the same technique that I'm using or if you wanted to you could just do something like this very very subtle so I think what we might do because this is going to be mostly white here we'll colour in this background so everything pops. And that actually makes the white look a bit whiter. And that'll just look beautiful. The design will make it look beautiful. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit, very lightly here. I'm not gonna go right to the edge and just gonna variate that as I go round. You can see how pretty that looks already. With the centre here, I've got like a black, sometimes anemone is like a kind of black, but I thought I'd use the purple actually. So um, maybe we'll add a little bit of black as well. So we do purple and black perhaps. But you know, I thought, hmm, quite fancy just using a bit of a different color here. Cause we can use some purple in this design or maybe in the grayscale. So that'd be nice for it all to kind of match up a little bit. I think I might actually grab my black pencil. I didn't actually have that originally selected, but I think I'm going to go and do that. So you can go as heavy or as light as you wish. And obviously I haven't sharpened this one, so I'll go back and sharpen this, I think, before I start adding it to the small little pips inside here. I'll quickly sharpen that. So we've got a nice combo of a bit of purple, bit of kind of blue black and an actual black in there as well nice 
Okay, and then we're gonna go, we're gonna work our way outwards, I think. So I think I might color in some of this green and I've got two different greens. Perhaps we use this lighter color first. And I might just go round a little bit. Thought I'd use a different green. I tend to I tend to gravitate towards the same colours I do. So it's actually really nice to choose designs that have some different colour combinations. And this is certainly this green here is definitely a green that I wouldn't always use. It's quite dark. But you know, I think it's good to challenge ourselves a little bit with some different colour combinations. Now, of course, you don't have to blend if you don't want to. You can just use one colour. And then you can use kind of like, you know, your pressure of your pencil to kind of create some gradient. You can also go over the lines as well if you want to with your pencil. That pulls that line image out a little bit. So you'll see because I'm adding the dark green on top, it's kind of it is kind of cancelling out this colour a little bit. So it's just very, very subtle when you're blending them together. It has a nice effect on the leaves. And then I want, what I might do is add a bit more pressure with this darker green with the leaves in the background. I'm going to use this lighter green to go round for the stalks here. It'd be nice to have a bit of contrast with the greens, but I'm still keeping with the same colour palette. And I might lightly use the darker green as well on here. And you can use the darker green to kind of add a little bit of shadow to the stalks as well as you go round. So for these other flowers here, I'm going to do them slightly different to this particular one here. So I'm still using the red, the pinky red. I'm going to add a little bit of kind of purple to them, but kind of blend it out. So it's going to be kind of quite white. So similar to this one here, white on the edge and then blending that purple out. But you've got like this lovely red burgundy because we're blending these two colours together kind of in the bottom of the flower here. Thing with the anemones as well, you can get some beautiful kind of like velvety colours. They kind of look very velvety. So you kind of want to try and mimic that a little bit. I mean, obviously, if we were adding water to this, it might kind of blend better. But we're just going to keep going with the pencils to begin with. I think it's really good to kind of practice you're blending just with regular pencils. We can work our way around. And you can blend as much or as little as you want to. There's no right or way, like no right or wrong way here. You can just go with your gut with what you feel. Nice to have a slight variation to what we've already got here. I might 
feel a bit heavier in the back the back petals there's always a little bit more shadow there So I'm just going to use this on the four, these four that are going around here. And I think these will be similar, but I might use a little bit more purple on these ones. So, you know, it's kind of like balancing the colours out a little bit as well. OK, so I'm going to go around and do these four first, I think. Just kind of repeat kind of similar approach. And actually, I am just using this red. I haven't started using this pinky red. So I may, maybe I'll put that in with the buds or something, but I haven't actually used that one yet. Okay, so I might actually dive in with this pink here, this more pinky colour. And I think I'm going to go in here and add the pink and the purple together. But let's see if I can do that. Normally the buds are kind of like a little bit more vibrant, aren't they? So these ones are slightly different. There's this one here that's going to be more green. So maybe I'll add a bit of colour, but actually have this to be more green. And then obviously here... We've got them kind of little buds coming, getting ready to show up. And this isn't actually that much different to the other colour. It's just got a slight tinge of pink in there. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little tiny bit of purple. Blend that together. Just for something different. That's really pretty. I've just realised I missed a stalk there. <laughs> Come back and do that in a minute. up those little bits that I missed that one there and actually over here To this red I think and maybe I'm going to do the red and the pinky colour together for these ones so obviously I'm keeping to the same colour palette but I'm kind of like I'm changing um, you know what's the primary colour in each area so obviously here I've got quite heavy purple 
I've been blending here. This has just got the red. So it's really nice when you're using a limited colour palette to, you know, to do that. So we are going to jump in here with this red and I think I'm going to come in straight away with this pinky red and then I'm going to blend this up here. So let's grab this pinky red. I mean, like I said before, there's not a huge difference. call this finish now but as an additional option you could add another color in the background here um i mean i think you could there's different different things you can do you can add perhaps like a really really dark blue so it's contrasting with these greens here and it'll really make that center anemone really pop out and the rest pop out so similar to what my original drawing kind of looked like here, you know, with the dark in the background, you can try something like that. Or you can just put a very, very subtle colour behind there, like a, a lovely sky blue um, or something like that. So here, there are a couple of options for you to finish your piece off. So I may go ahead and just add a very light blue, actually. And then I'll just keep the camera rolling and I'll just go ahead and colour in this lovely grayscale page here. So what is lovely about grayscale is, um, you know, obviously the lines aren't so dark. So you could actually use your colour pencil to actually outline this a little bit more. And it's easier to outline when you've got the grayscale. So say, for example, here, I'm just going to show you. We can just go along and we can outline just one of these petals here. And you'll see that obviously it's not so harsh. It's much more subtle because you haven't got a dark black line like you do over here. So it's kind of slightly different colouring pages. And this is really meant to be lighter on the lighter side of colouring because obviously you've got the main colouring page on the reverse side of that as well. So I'll just keep the camera rolling. I'm going to just do something very subtle, maybe something similar to this, very light, um, you know, light on the pressure. And um, I think I'll then decide what I'm going to do here. But I'll probably grab like a sky blue colour just to pop behind here, just to take the harshness of that white off and help this pop. Just very, very slightly, but you can add a very dark colour in there if you want as well. So that's a couple of options. So I hope you've enjoyed colouring along with me and I can't wait to see what you guys colour. Thanks a lot, everyone.
so here is the finished design everyone so i hope you enjoyed this video i really loved coloring in this design and i love coloring in the grayscale don't these pages look amazing together oh my goodness so i think in all my future videos we're going to be doing the grayscale as well so we can get a gorgeous double spread like this from our coloring book so um all of the information is in the description of the video below so the coloring pencils i use the colors as well and um, some other information so if you haven't yet purchased the book you can click on the link in there and purchase the book i do hope that soon i will actually be offering individual downloads so if you don't want to buy the book but you like the individual flowers from video to video then you'll be able to download the actual individual coloring pages as well so i'm going to be offering that to you all right so if you have any questions then please add them below i'd love to hear from you i'd love to know what you think about this design how you found it coloring in or any other questions you have at all and if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button and the little notifications bell so you know when the next video comes out these are every saturday and i look forward to seeing you next time thanks a lot everyone bye